In this lesson, I'm going to talk about some specialized editing techniques that tend to be used by more experienced editors. The two main parts of this lesson are called source patching and track targeting. We're also going to talk about track lock and sync lock. You can use all four of these things together to streamline your editing. To follow along, go to Working Files, go to Projects, and go on down to Source Patching. The four items I'm going to discuss are all here inside the track headers. This left-hand column is the source indicator for source patching. This is the track lock column. This is the track target column. And this is the sync lock column. The important development here, the latest version of Premiere Pro, is that the source indicator and the track targets are decoupled. And there's a good reason for that. They each have their own set of features. We're going to start off with track targeting. The track targets are right there. Right now, currently, Video 1 and Audio 1 are targeted. Track targeting has a few functions. I'm going to show you two of them. Track targeting allows you to navigate through your project. Currently, Video 1 and Audio 1 are active. So if I press the down arrow key, I'm going to navigate to each edit point one at a time like this, forward through the project. If I press the up arrow key, I go back one edit point in Video 1 and Audio 1. But if I change the target, let's say, to Audio 2 and not Audio 1, and turn off Video 1, then I'm going to go from this edit point to that edit point when I press the down arrow key. No intermediary edits here. These guys are not targeted. That's why I'm not going to them individually, because that track is not targeted. If I target this one and the one down there, then this will then be the one that drives it one edit point at a time. You can target more than one track. So that's one reason you use this, to navigate through your project. Another reason to use this is to paste things. I'm going to copy this first clip here. I want to paste it elsewhere in the project. So I'll just take my current time indicator and put it there. The tracks that this pasted thing end up on are based upon the tracks that are targeted. Right now, Audio 1 and Audio 2 are targeted. I'm going to turn off Audio 1, just leave Audio 2 on like that. And no video track is targeted. And that's on purpose, because if nothing's targeted, then it defaults to Video 1. So I want to paste this clip now here inside this sequence. So I copy this clip by doing Control or Command C. Now I want to paste it right there by doing Control or Command V. When I do that, let's see what happens. It covers up what was there. It overwrites it and overwrites the audio down here. Well, we don't want to overwrite this music. That was music there a second ago. Here's the music. And now we've overwritten it with that noise. So this is not what we want to do, probably. So we need to change which tracks are targeted. I'll undo that by doing Control or Command Z. And now I'm going to paste it, which is an overwrite edit, to Audio 3 instead. And I'll also paste it to Video 2. Now notice that Audio 2 is still turned on. Well, if I leave it like that, it will paste to Audio 2. It always pastes to the lowest numbered track. So I'll undo that and make sure it goes to Audio 3. Now I'll do Control or Command V, and it pastes it where I want it to be pasted, right there in Video 2 and Audio 3. Let me undo that. Now I want to do an Insert Edit. An Insert Edit slice things up and shove them to the right, which is sometimes good and sometimes not so good. I'm going to insert this thing that I copied right here, and I want to insert it on V2 and Audio 3. To do a paste insert requires a slightly different keyboard shortcut. I'll show it to you. Under Edit, Paste Insert, Control Shift V in Windows, Command Shift V in Mac. I'll just click this. And here's what happens. It slices everything and shoves everything to the right, which is fine. But again, it cut the music there. So I'm going to get no music there at all, just natural sound. Not what I want to have happen there. I want to protect this track down here. So I'll undo that. There are a couple of ways to protect the track. I can lock the track right here. But locking is kind of the sledgehammer approach to editing. When you lock a track, you can't do anything to it. You can't trim it, you can't apply effects to it, you can't move it around, nothing. It's stuck, which is not necessarily what you want to have happen. But I'm going to show you that you can lock it like this, and now I want to do an insert edit. So I do Control shift v or Command shift v and now I've done the insert. These guys shoved to the right, but this music track down here does not, which is what we want to have happen. But using this track lock is really not the best way to do it, I think. The best way to do it, I think, is to use sync lock. So I'm going to undo this. And I'm going to unlock this track. And here's sync lock. These are the sync lock indicators, and they're all on by default. Sync lock means that everything is in sync. If you slice something like this with an insert edit, then everything goes to the right. You can turn off sync lock to say that this track is no longer in sync with everybody else. So in other words, if we do an insert edit, this will not be affected. So I'll go back over here. I'll do Control Shift V or Command Shift V. There's the insert, and the music is not touched. We did put it up there and shove everything to the right, but we did not affect the music track. That's how you use this sync lock. It's a very effective tool. I'll undo all this, Control or Command Z, and turn sync lock back on. Now I want to show you source patching using this source indicator. If I click over here, nothing's going to happen. Over here, when I click on things, they turn them on and off, right? But here, nothing happens when I click. 
These guys will turn on with some kind of an indicator only when you select something that you want to put here from either the source monitor or the project panel. If I click on this video clip there, it's video and audio, then I get a V1 and A1 here. Now the V1 stands for the first track on which video will go. It doesn't stand for V1 here, it just says this is where the video will go on this track. If I click up here, then video will go up there. If I click audio down here, then audio goes down here. Now notice what happens when I click there. It changed from having nothing around it to having gray around it. Nothing around it means it's off. Even though it's indicated, nothing will happen on the track if it's off. This is on. So I'll put it up here where V1 is with it off for the time being. I'll put A1 down here in the third track. I'll turn that off for the time being by clicking on it again. I'm going to open this guy up inside the source monitor by double clicking on it. I'm going to do a little in and out here. Let's pull this in a little bit like that. Put the in point. Go here and set the out point. And now I want to bring this clip on down to the sequence by using this overwrite button or this insert button. We'll do overwrite first. Overwrite does not cut things. It just lays them on top. With V1 selected and A1 selected, you'd think that this thing would end up here on this track and this track, but nothing will happen. I can click all day long and nothing will happen because these guys are off. I'll click it on now, and I'm not going to turn on audio. I'll click on this, and it just puts video there. It won't put the audio down because I did not have that turned on. Do Control-Z, don't do that. I'll turn on audio now, and now when I click on this guy, it puts both video and audio there. I'll undo that. If I do an insert, it's going to cut these guys. So I'll do the insert, slices them up as you'd expect. Slices up the music track again. I'll undo that. We'll put sync lock off for music. We'll do the insert again. And now the music track is protected and everything else is shoved to the right. So we're able to put those guys there based upon the source indicator here, the source patching. We can also do source patching from the project panel. Let me undo this edit. Controller command Z and undo that. Over here in the project panel, I'm going to turn on icons. I'll go to this one here. Do the hover scrub on that one. But if I click on it, I get this little controller here. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to press the I key for the endpoint. I'm going to go in a little ways like this again, slide it to the right. I'm going to press the O key for the out point. I've now done the same thing I did up here in the source monitor, but now it's down here inside the project panel. When I click on it, we get the same V1A1 again. Let's put it down here on this level here like that. Let's put this one here in this track there. And now we're going to do an overwrite. It'll cover these guys up. So I'll right click on this. There's overwrite. Covered them up like that. Controller command Z to undo that. I'm going to right click on this again and now I'm going to say insert. It'll slice things up again the same way it did before but because we have sync lock off it didn't affect the music track down there. So that's how that works. If I alt or option click on the source indicator it puts a little black border around it. Doing this is called silence or black. So if I right click on this now and go to insert it's going to put black here and put the audio down here because I did not silence that one. So I'll go to insert and it basically puts black there, nothing there, for the duration of this trimmed clip. If I do that for audio as well, I'll go up here, I'll undo that, Control command Z, and I'll alt or option click on this and put a black border around that. And I'll right click on this and I'll say insert. It inserts silence here and black there. That's just a little extra trick there if you want to put in a certain amount of silence or a certain amount of black video right there. So that's how you use these four features, the source patching, the track targeting, the sync lock, and the track lock.